Backpacking, the art of getting out more. Episode 1, Gear and More Gear. Backpacking is one of the great American pastimes. It can take you to some of the most amazing places the planet's ever seen. It's recreating to be in the backcountry, but boy, that looks like a lot of gear to carry. Just what does somebody need to go backpacking? How much gear do I need to bring? How hard is it for me to get in the backcountry? Looks like a lot of organization. How do you get all that gear into that one pack? Hi everyone, my name is John Cressatelli. I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking to you about the gear you need to successfully spend some time in the backcountry. Backpacking is really easier than you think. We'll look at six different categories today. We'll look at essential gear, the four things you absolutely have to splurge yourself on and not go without. We'll look at basic gear, all the little things you need to collect along the way that you'll collect over many years. We'll spend some time in the kitchen looking at pots and pans. We'll deal with water and look at pumps and filters and things like that. And then we'll look at your personal hygiene and your first aid. Let's go look for gear. Your essential gear. I can't stress this enough. You have to spend your most amount of money on these four items. Your hiking boots. Feet are the number one thing that ruin a backpacking trip. Make sure your boots are supportive and well fit. You can go with leather or synthetic, it's up to you. Some people like the thick support of a leather boot because they have weaker ankles, while others prefer the lightweight synthetic boot with a Gore-Tex lining to stay water dry. Either way, the number one thing is fit and comfort. Your backpack. You'll be carrying everything on your back. It's got to fit you right. Your torso has to be fit correctly. Only buy a pack from a reputable dealer who will measure your torso and find out exactly what kind of pack fits your body. Then and only then can they deal with the right size for your gear. If you're going on a three-day trip on a usual basis, that's a much smaller pack than someone who's going to go for five to seven days. Only a good dealer will fit you right and make sure you have the right pack. Your tent, your home, your castle. Most people prefer their first tent to be a two-person tent. It's the most versatile and easier to use, and most people prefer, prefer a three-season tent as opposed to a summer or winter tent. Summer tents are great if you're only going to camp in the summer, but they don't hold up in the weather. And winter tents are far too heavy and far too expensive if you don't plan to use them. And your sleeping bag, your bed, you must be really careful with this. Most people think they need to deal with either down or synthetic, and that's the debate. But really the debate is this. Size, size, size. There are long ones, there are short ones, there are narrow ones, there are wide ones, there are soft ones, there are some with an open foot box. It's really which bag fits you and which bag fits your budget. These are the four things you can't live without. Hiking boots, backpack, tent, and sleeping bag. Splurge, take care of yourself, and do it right. Let's move on. Your basic gear. There's lots of this, so you have to be really careful. But buy it along the way. Christmas presents, stocking stuffers, a lot of the stuff is small. Mapping, trail guides, and compass. Don't just carry them. Know how to use them. Know how to read your map and know how to use your compass. And always carry trail guides wherever you go. Flashlight and headlamp. Lots of headlamps, easy, versatile, and camp, especially when you're cooking. But remember, you need lots of batteries. Always. <coughs> you need a watch, sunglasses, and a knife. Knife is always really versatile. And a sleeping pad. You can't imagine how nice it is to wake up when you're sleeping on a pad at night. And a rope for hanging your food. I don't think any bear's going to get that food hanging up that high in the tree. These are the basic things you need. But there's other things as well. Let's look in the kitchen. Your kitchen kit. Most wildernesses don't let you have fires anymore. So they require a stove. They could be canister white gas or multi-fuel and you'll have to decide which one you prefer. Fuel is your major decision. Canisters are lightweight, easy to use, mostly work for solos, but don't work in cold temps or high elevation. Most people prefer white gas for those reasons and multi-fuel stoves are great if you're traveling in other countries. You have to remember your windscreen and your repair kits because your stove needs to be totally self-sufficient when you're in the woods. Fuel and fuel bottles. Never forget to have enough. Air on the side of too much fuel, then running out with two days left in your trip. Cook pots and lids, 
Some people prefer the two-quart saucepan with a cover. It's the most versatile. People stuff all their gear in it. Some people prefer to have a frying pan with them. Some people do more cooking than others. You'll notice I have a kettle on my stove. I only boil water. Don't forget your pot gripper, though, because all stoves get really hot, and you can't pick up your pot without that fancy pot gripper. But there's lots more in the kitchen. There's all those little things, and all those little things in that picture will stuff inside my kettle. Makes it great for traveling. Your utensils, you need that bowl and spoon. Sports are popular, and cups. Don't forget those coffee essentials, like that filter. You'll need a scrubber sponge and a dishcloth, lighter and matches, measuring cup, because most freeze-dried food requires careful measurements, and Ziploc bags that you'll use for everything from your wet utensils to your trash. You'll use them for lots of different things. That's the kitchen. Let's see what happens when we deal with water. Water. It's the number one place you're going to get some Giardia, or you're going to get some waterborne disease. Filtered water is really preferable in the backcountry. I would never use water purification tablets as my steady method of filtering water. Always filter your water. If you're going out for more than two days, buy a filter. Water purification tablets are great in case of emergency. Water bottles. They fit. Generally, water pumps will fill right into your bottle and will fill right into your water bag. I always prefer these small dromedary bags. This is a 10 liter bag, perfect for two guys for dinner and breakfast. So if you have your two bottles and your 10 liter bag, it's 12 liters of water. It's a lot of water. Fill all bottles and bags at last known water. We try to camp near water, but if you know you're not camping near water, fill this 10 liter dromedary bag before you head out and keep your bottles clean. That's how you get waterborne illnesses, is if you drop it in the pond and you're not keeping your bottles clean. That's why I suggest wide mouth bottles and a wide mouth bladder. Easy to maintain. Your personal gear is pretty much similar to what you travel with when you travel in general. You have your regular toiletry kit with your toothbrush and your comb and your biodegradable soap and your hand wipes, your towel and face cloth, your TP, but you need a trowel because in the back country, according to leave no trace principles, you have to dig a cat hole to deal with your waste. So you need that trowel. Insect repellent and sunscreen and lip balm. I can't stress this enough though, if you're going to travel in bear country, make sure the things in your toiletry kit are low or no odor. Let's look at first aid. First aid, I'm not going to really rattle off a list for you right now, but I'm going to scroll through it as I talk about making sure your band-aids are up to date, your medications aren't old, that you have all the medications you need. If you have a prescription, make sure it's in the prescription bottle. Make sure you have your Benadryl and your motion sickness and your Imodium. Make sure you have lots of medication. Make sure you have lots of band-aids. Make sure you have a blister kit and moleskin because those feet really need your care. It's always helpful to have a first aid book to boot. You never know when you might need it. Okay, boy, there's only a few more things, I think. Wow, it seems like a lot. There are a lot of miscellaneous items you need to have with you as well. If it's buggy, these things are invaluable. That mosquito head net, in this case I have a whole jacket on, might save you from giving up a pint. Hiking poles are really helpful to save your knees. And you gadget people, you love the GPS, the digital camera, the walkie-talkies. But you can't forget things like duct tape in a top free kitchen area, preferably only 8x10, an emergency fire starter in case you're wet and cold. Don't forget binoculars for that wildlife viewing. And certainly, cribbage boards and other games are helpful if you're stuck in your tent in the rain. That's about it for all the miscellaneous things. It's quite a bit, but for this stuff, we, it's mostly the icing on the cake. Food and clothing? Boy, that's for another time and another great video. We were just looking at gear for this one. Well, that's it, folks. That's the basic gear you need for a backpacking trip. Hope it was helpful. Get out and buy that gear and get yourself out in the wilderness. Just look at these three photos. We had a blast in all three cases. Get out and have fun and go buy some gear. Thanks.